Hello everyone, I'm Norman Wahlberger and um, we're talking about mathematics and music. Today we're going to look at an attempt to create a perfect scale from a Pythagorean point of view. And we're going to see that essential number theoretical difficulty that I talked about last time emerging, but in a different way as we look at cycle of fifths and then cycle of fourths and see how the two ends don't really end up matching up. So the idea is that We've got 12 tones in our basic scale, and if we adopt a Pythagorean point of view and we want to associate exact numerical proportions to each of these 12 tones. So that, for example, a perfect fifth would be 3 to 2, perfect fourth will be 4 to 3, and so on. So I've outlined a few others, but how do we actually consistently assign exact frequencies to each of these 12 positions? Can we do that? Well, you already know that you can't really do it, but I want to show you why a very natural attempt at doing this ultimately fails. And it turns out, very interestingly, that it has a lot to do with this notorious irrational number square root of 2. Now, you'll all know that the Pythagoreans were the first to really deal with the irrationality of this so-called number. If you take a square and you look at the diagonal of the square and say, okay, let's try to assign lengths to these various things. Let's try, let's assign a length of one to the, to the sides of the, of the square. Then what's the length going to be of this diagonal? Well, it turns out that the length of the diagonal is not a well-defined concept, okay? But another way of saying that is that this, this diagonal's length, if it did exist, would have to be square root of two. There would have to be a number whose square is two, and it turns out there is no such number, okay? So that's, that's the conundrum. So curiously, that same irrationality figures in this Pythagorean approach to music. Okay, so this is not um, sufficiently appreciated. It's a very interesting fact. Okay, so we're going to approach things now not in terms of a piano and the notes on the piano, which is rather arbitrary, but rather in this more intrinsic fashion where we've subdivided an octave into 12 equal pieces, equal in the sense that the ratios of frequencies of adjacent steps are all equal. So we have notes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then back to 0. Okay, now to orient you with the usual music, you can think about this as being corresponding to the usual scale starting, say, from C. So this is note 0 is C, and then C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, which is also G flat, G, A flat, A, B flat, B. And uh, this, uh, this note down here, which is sort of opposite the starting note, is uh, of special importance, as we'll see. So suppose that the only proportion that we knew about was the perfect fifth proportion corresponding to a ratio of frequencies of 3 to 2. Could we then somehow create frequencies in a consistent fashion for these, um, the other 11? Well, the answer to this question, of course, is no. Okay, so let's, let's make sure that we all appreciate it, right? The answer is no. And I, I want to sort of, so I want to explain from this cycle of seven steps point of view why this is the case. And it's actually very important because this cycle of seven steps that we're going to utilize is a, a fundamental building block for not just classical music, but a lot of jazz and pop music as well. Okay, it's a, a really important... Um, musical construction, not just a mathematical one. Okay, so we're going to start generating something which is classically called a cycle of fifths. And we're going to do it the following. So we're going to start at note zero, which you can think about as being C on the piano, if you like. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to go around this clock, this chromatic scale, in steps of seven. So it's not really a cycle of fifths, it's really rather a cycle of seven steps. That's a better way of thinking about it, okay? So we're going to start here, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to take a seven step. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way down to here, okay? That's a seven step. So we're going to end up at the G. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk around this clock taking steps which are actually seven uh, steps along. Okay, so we start note zero, which is C, and then we get to G. 
What's the next one? The next one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There it is there, it's D. Altogether, we've taken 14 steps, and the position that we're at is two, because 14 in mod 12 arithmetic is the same as two. Okay, now we have to go seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We end up at A. Okay, so we've got a total of 21 steps, and if you mod out by 12, in other words, subtract 12, then you get nine, so that's why we're at position nine. And that's the note usually called A on the piano. Now another seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's E. 28 steps, which corresponds to a position of four on our scale. That's the note E. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We are at B, which is at position 11. And then one more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're arriving at F sharp which is at position six. And now let's discuss um, what the frequencies should be that we're going to associate to these various notes, okay? Where we agree that note zero is going to be a frequency of one. So here's our frequency scale, okay? So we're starting, whatever unit we're choosing, that's the unit of, of our starting point. And then the first step that we're taking, this perfect fifth, we know that's going to increase frequency by a factor of three over two. Okay, that's the, the Pythagorean understanding that we're utilizing. At each stage, we're going to multiply the previous frequency by three over two. So we're going to move along up here. So in the next, in the next stage, when we go from here, um, so we've gone from here to here, and then the next stage we've gone from the, the G to the D. Okay? So now the, the, the total frequency is 3 over 2 squared, but we have to divide by 2. Why is that? Well, because, you see, what we've done is we've gone around the clock once and gone into sort of the, the next level. So we've, we've, on the piano, we've gone past the original octave, and now we're in the next octave above. But we want to relate that to actually a note in the actual octave between the low C and, and the next C. Okay? So, so since we know that the relationship between a note and its, the octave above it is a ratio of 2 to 1, to get back from that higher D to the, the D that's in our nice scale, we have to divide by 2. Okay? So we're dividing by 2, so we're getting 3 halves squared over 2, which is 9 over 8. Okay, 9 over 8 um, on the scale, let me put it uh, here, well first of all maybe we should do th 3 halves, that's, um, that's 1.5, that's right there, okay? So that's, uh, that's the note G, and this one here is the note C that we started with, okay? And so now we've just gotten to D, and now it's at 1.125, uh, there's uh, 0.1, so 1.25 is roughly about there, okay? So there would be D. Okay, so then the next one, A, we obtain that one from here, uh, over here, by step of seven, okay? And so we have to multiply by three halves again. So we take this thing here, multiply by three halves. We get 27 over 16, which is 1.6875, 1.6875, so closer to 1.7, somewhere over here, okay? So that is going to be the position of A. Now let me pause here, okay? So A is a perfect sixth from C. So the way I'm calibrating this value, the frequency for A, is, is thinking of it as being obtained by um, doing a perfect fifth to G, and then another perfect fifth to D, and then another perfect fifth to A, and then dividing by two, so to give us the octave, uh, going back an octave to the, to the original range. Now you remember perhaps that when we talked about Pythagorean intervals at the beginning, uh, earlier video, I talked about um, also uh, you know, major thirds, minor thirds, and, and major sixths. And we made a little calculation. We said that a major sixth, if it was a combination of a perfect fourth and a major third, then it's going to be obtained by taking four thirds and multiplying by five quarters. Do you remember that? To get five thirds. So at that time, I suggested that a natural um, association 
of a, of a major six would be to the frequency proportion five to three. You see that what we're obtaining here now is something different. This is not five to three. So already we're getting uh, this feeling that we're sort of out of sync, or maybe it's, it's more that there's more than one way of obtaining a, a potentially useful value for this particular note A. We could have a difference of opinion. I could say, oh, A should be 5 to 3, and you could say, no, A should be 27 to 16, and we could have a discussion. How close are these things? So is, is this uh, close to 5 thirds? Well, remember, if you have two fractions, uh, 5 over 3, say, if you uh, multiply 16 times 5, uh, that's uh, 80. If you multiply uh, 3 by 27, that's 81. So those two uh, products are pretty close. If they were actually equal, then the two fractions would be exactly equal. But 80 and 81 are pretty close, so that's telling us that those two fractions are pretty close, but they're not the same. So already here, already at this stage, we're seeing that the actual position, the exact position where we should put the A, or if you like, you know, how we're, where are we going to put this guitar string fret, you know, we're making a guitar. Where should we put the, the fret that's going to be on A? There's a, there's a possible difference of opinion. Okay, so let's carry on. From A, the next one is E. We multiply by uh, 3 over 2. We're going from this A to this E. But again, we're sort of crossing the, the, uh, the octave point. We have to divide by another factor of 2 to get us in the, in the right range. That's where we're dividing by uh, 4 here. So it's 3 halves to the 4th over 4, and that is 81 over 64. And that is indeed in this range from 1 to 2. And that's roughly 1.2656. Uh, so 1.26, there's 0 0.2, there's 0 0.3, 1.26, a little bit more than there, so there, there would be E. Great. Next one, B. 1 quarter, 3 halves to the fifth. Again, we're just multiplying by 3 halves. That's how we go from one to the next. We get 243 over 128, which is 1.898, which is almost 1.9. That's up here. There will be B. And the last in this, in this cycle up till now, the F sharp, multiplied by another three halves, have to divide by another two to get us in the range between one and two. We get 729 over 512, which is roughly 1.4238. 1 1.4238. Uh, okay, so that there's an F sharp, um, perhaps somewhere around here. Okay, F sharp. So if you were, say, going to create a Pythagoreanly perfect guitar, at least by one criterion, one sort of approach to this, would be to say, okay, these are going to sort of correspond to uh, positions where we're going to uh, mark where the frets are going to be. Okay, so these are, these are decimal values that we could use to, to get sort of perfect tuning, at least from one point of view. And we've gone halfway actually through the cycle of fifths. This is not all the way because as you can see, we were just getting, uh, so far we just get one, two, three, four, five, six, um, seven. So the, the first uh, note and then, and then six additional ones. So there's still uh, more to go here, okay? Uh, and so uh, let's go in the other direction to get the rest of the cycle of fifths. Okay, so these are the notes in green that we've already obtained and that we have obtained by going clockwise steps of seven from the original note to zero. Now we're going to go in the other direction. So we're kind of headed in that direction. And now we're going to head in that direction and take steps of size seven still. Okay. So this is cycle of fifths down, but it's really a um, cycle of seven steps. Okay. But we're going down now. So we're going to. So we're going to go uh, left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The first one that we're going to get to is five. So we're, we're essentially going in this direction here. Uh, like that, okay? That's our, our seventh step in the, in the negative direction, if you like. So the first thing that we end up getting is uh, F. And then we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We get this B flat. There it is there. And uh, that's a total of uh, 14 steps in the in the negative direction okay so negative 14 so if you add 24 which is a multiple of 12 then you get 10 so this is in position 10 on our uh, clock chart okay the next one e flat 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's a E flat or the same thing as D sharp. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we're getting A flat. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we're getting C sharp or D flat. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we're back to F um, sharp, which is the same note that we got when we headed in that direction and took six steps. Now we're heading in this direction, taking six steps, and we're getting at the same position on our clock chart. Okay, so let's have a look at the uh, corresponding frequency values. Uh, I didn't maybe write down, I should. So this was um, our frequency. That's given by the formula. And here's the actual evaluation of that frequency. And here's the approximate frequency in decimal kind of position, okay? So corresponding to what we did before. So let's just go through them. So now what we're doing, when we're taking a step in this direction, it's the opposite of uh, the steps in that direction. Going in this direction, the seventh step, we multiplied by three halves. So in the opposite direction, we should divide by three halves, which of course is the same as multiplying by two thirds. Okay, so we are taking the frequency here and multiplying it by two thirds. So here on this page here, we would multiply by two thirds. So we're so we're down here somewhere. Okay, but we want to get back into this range. So what we do is we multiply by two to get back into the uh, into the range to get back to um, to what actually uh, the value is 1.33. So up here, so adding to what we've already got 1.33. Uh, there's 0.3. So 1.33 would be about there. So that's going to be our, our F. Okay, so we're augmenting the notes that we've already got. Okay, and then the next one, B flat. Uh, again, we multiply by another two thirds because we're, we're, we're carrying on going in the negative direction. But now we have to uh, multiply by another two because we were further down here. So we have to multiply by two. So we multiply four times two thirds squared. That turns out to be 16 over nine, which is 1.777. 0.6, 0.7, 1.77, something about uh, maybe there, okay. Uh, what note is that? That's B flat. Great. After that, we get E flat, which is 32 over 27. That's about 1.18. 1 1.18, 1 right from about here. So there's E flat in there. Okay. And then after that, A flat, which is 128 over 81, about 1.58458. There's an A flat in there. And then D flat is about 1.0535, so that's um, pretty small. So there's D flat there. And finally, the last one, G flat, which is 1024 over 729. It's about 1.4047. Well, that's sort of the same one as we uh, got earlier, but it's actually just a little bit less. So I'm, I'm going to put it on top of it a little bit uh, there. That's, that's a G flat. And we'd like this G flat to be the same as what we got going that direction, right? So if, if that worked, then everything would be hunky-dory, right? We're taking seven steps in that direction and finally getting to the F sharp, or we're taking uh, six steps in that direction, or we're taking six steps in this direction and finally getting to G flat, same position on the clock. And hopefully those frequency values that we compute are going to be the same, but they're not the same, okay? They're not the same, and that's again, another manifestation of the problem. That's why creating such a Pythagorean scale, which is completely perfect, uh, is not going to work. Okay, so if we want a cycle of fifths, which sort of wraps around and comes back and, and joins up so that we have sort of a clean cycle of 12 uh, perfect fifths, that's impossible. And, and that's the result of the fact that we've gotten this F sharp or G flat note in two different ways, but unfortunately, the actual frequency values that we've obtained for these two different methods do not agree. So in the first step, when we took our, um, our seven steps in, in the forward direction, we ended up with F sharp having a frequency of 729 over 512, which was roughly, approximately, 1.4238. Okay. And then in the other direction, as we took the seven steps in the negative direction, we got, say, G flat with frequency 1024 over 729, which is approximately 1.4047.
and these two are not the same visibly. So that's another manifestation. It's really the same arithmetical problem that we talked about in our last video. The fact that 12 perfect uh, fifths don't make up 7 octaves. It's really essentially exactly the same arithmetical uh, situation. So you might say, well, okay, we almost have a perfect scale, right? I mean, I, I created all these notes. Now we have, we have good frequencies for all these notes, except for just this one F sharp, okay, or G flat. So there's various options that you could do. You could say, well, we'll stick with, with all the notes, and for F sharp, maybe we'll just pick one of these, okay? So if we pick one of these, say that one there, then one of the perfect fifths on one side of it is a real perfect fifth, but the other one is definitely not. Okay, and that's sometimes referred to uh, as a wolf interval. Okay, it's, it's supposed to be a perfect fifth, but it's not, and it sort of sounds definitely not like a perfect fifth. Another option, of course, would be to say, no, no, no let's use this one as our F sharp or G flat, and then the, the wolf interval would be on the other side. Yet another option, sort of a compromise, would be to say, well, let, why don't we just sort of, uh, you know, um, cut, cut our losses and, and, and go halfway, okay? Why don't we take the average of these two? That's a kind of a compromise. So neither um, perfect fifth on either side of it is going to be perfect, but, but not too bad. So what do you actually get? So if we take these two fractions, and uh, add them and, and divide by two, that's taking the average. So this is actually arithmetically what we're doing. We're taking one half of three to the six over two to the nine plus two to the 10 over three to the six. And, um, and uh, taking this average, well, then we get this thing here, okay? And this turns out to be around 1.414246, which you'll probably recognize uh, that's very close to the approximate so-called square root of 2. 1.414214, etc., etc. Okay, pretty close agreement here. So, and that's not a surprise, because remember our, our, our clock, okay? We're, we're, we're agreeing that every step here is going to be an equal step in terms of a frequency ratio, and that the entire clock is going to correspond to a factor of two. So each of those steps is going to be a twelfth of, all the way around, so actually corresponding to a frequency ratio of the twelfth root of two, which I've stressed does not really exist. Okay, there is no twelfth root of two, people. That's the way the world is. Okay, just like there is no square root of two, I'm sorry, but, you know, the, it's, it's, it's reality. Okay, there are only approximate square roots of two. That's all there is. That's all there ever, ever is. Okay, so what we're, what we're seeing here is that this approximate square root of two is associated to the, the bottom point of our clock, to the six o'clock position on our clock. The furthest from the starting point. The one that's, that's um, furthest from uh, the, the starting point, not just if you go by steps 1 or, or minus 1, but also if you go by step 7 or minus 7. And we're seeing that, curiously, somehow musically, what we're doing is we're, we're making a computation, right? If you didn't know what the square root of 2 is, this computation that I've just done purely musically, okay, has yielded us uh, not, too, not too bad um, approximate square root of 2. This, if you square this number, you're not going to get 2, but it's not going to be too far off. Purely musically. So, this, this issue with the irrationality of square root of 2, I want to impress upon you, is not just something that comes up in geometry, okay? It's also something that comes up in music, and very prominently so, okay? And the Pythagoreans had their hand in, in both, uh, both of these camps. I'm Norman Wahlberger. Thanks for listening.